Today's episode of The Photographic Eye is very proudly brought to you by Pick Drop. How's it, how's it? Do you ever get that moment? You look at somebody's photography. You never heard of them before, but instantly you fall in love. Right? That was what happened when I checked out the work of Maria Zvarbova. I do hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And her image is called Swimming Pool. There we go. There's a fantastic book. There's a quote in the beginning of this book, which I think absolutely sums up what I love about her work. She says here, the architecture of the past stirs emotions within me. It is a feeling that is not easy to define, but I can feel its urgent pull on me. It is the nostalgia trickled with hints of melancholy that I love and wish to encapsulate in my photography. These photographs, and they have that air of communist sort of feeling to them. But Maria said that for her, because of her age, she's, she's fairly young, the, the, the communist idea wasn't really a, a thing. It was more kind of like she's reacting to the space. And there's, when she talks about her approach to these photographs, she said originally the idea was to go to the swimming pool to photograph portraits. And, and the swimming pool would be the backdrop. She got home and she realized that a couple of the photographs were actually more of the pool itself rather than that, you know, the person. They were a bit of a departure from what she'd, she planned. And I think that's a fantastic th a lesson that all of us as photographers, irrespective of whether or not we're a Hasselblad master, which, which Maria is, you need to listen to the environment, be in tune with, with what the, the place that you're photographing is, is, is the signals that it's sending out to you. I think I've talked about this in the past, these kind of signals that are there, you know, when, when these great photographs are like hiding away from you. And I'll link to this, that video at the end of this in case you haven't seen it. That, you know, Maria talks about this melancholy. That, for me, I, I find that an easy leap to make because I have by my own nature quite a melancholy approach. I, I am, as, as people who know me in, in real life will tell you, I am... I'm like the post child for nostalgia. I have this kind of weird ability to remember things from the past. And I look at these photographs and they make me feel that idea of nostalgia and melancholy. Even though I have nothing to do with it, I have never experienced this environment or anything like that, there is something about these photographs that I love that I'm going to try and put my finger on with you today in the hopes that when you look at photographs that you also enjoy, that you can go, ah, okay, I get a deeper, deeper appreciation for why you might enjoy that. And then possibly bring that into your own photography. On Saturday mornings, I put out a newsletter to the Photographic Eye community. And if you'd like to get your own copy, then click on the link in the comment section below. And those newsletters are all about, you know, making us think, making us feel inspired about our photography, of sharing sometimes ideas like we've been talking with, with Maria and her swimming pool, of going a little bit deeper into the, the art of photography and getting, I think, a, 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 a better understanding and a better appreciation of, of the things that really set our photographs apart. I'd love to be able to include you on the next mailing. So if you are interested, yeah, click on the link in the comment section below. These photographs, they've got that Eastern European kind of very odd sort of vibe to them. And in a modern sense, I would probably say that's something like Wes Anderson. So a movie like The Grand Budapest Hotel. That has that kind of Eastern fringes of, of Europe getting into sort of Asia sort of approach to it. That, that's what I get from this. It, I, I think that sort of comes because I used to read a lot of Tintin or Tonton when I was younger. And in some of those books, they go off to Albania or you know, places like that. And, and that kind of has this sort of feel. So, so I think from an aesthetic point of view, that's why it appeals to me. But there is this, this very formal approach to her photography. It's just so, you know, these are quite clearly contrived images. And by that, I mean, you know, she's told somebody to stand there and do this and do that. These are, these are not spread them up. This is not documentary, Cartier-Bresson kind of 
sort of things. This is the result of somebody really thinking about all the parts, all the elements in the photography, and then going, I think, a little bit further, because it would be simple, wouldn't it? He says, right? For her to go, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to do like a rule of thirds, or everything must just be exactly so in terms of composition. And the photography is not exact. It's, it's symmetrical, but not quite. And often, you know, when I've been talking to people about their photography and stuff like that, I've kind of gone, oh, that looks like it might be a mistake or something like that. And I'm going to backtrack on that ever so slightly and put that in context. I, th I feel that when you see an individual image and it's not quite center or it's not quite this, or then it looks like a mistake. But when you look at somebody's body of work, and this, this is why, you know, books and, and looking at somebody like Maria, you know, in... in in print form is so helpful because you actually get to see their their whole body of work. I, I first came across her her photography as as one image, and I went, oh, I really like that. Um, but there's only one photograph. You need to see all these things in context. So while something like you know the Hasbro Masters competition, which I talked about recently, is fantastic for discovering you know photographers' works, and and obviously you know there are other there are other competitions around. But, you know, I looked at the Hasselblad one and I go, do you know what, I, I really like a lot of what's there, probably because a lot of the stuff <laughs> is presented in a square format and, and things of that nature. But I look at it and, and those are great, but they're just individual photographs. I want to find out more. And so sometimes, you know, you need to go exploring, but that's a whole different conversation. So we've got, you know, Maria's aesthetic and, the feel that she has, you know, the buildings themselves are, are giving the, the aesthetic. We've also got the color choices, the simplicity of the outfits. All the people are just wearing, I, I would probably say, looking at this, quite old fashioned clothing, certainly the bathing caps that some of the girls are wearing. You know, they've got a sort of this little uh, flower doodad thing. So it kind of, it has this sort of futurish, but then also retro kind of vibe about it, which again takes it out of out of place, out of time. So that's the aesthetic. And that's fairly easy to, to look at. But then you have something that's a bit dip, more difficult. And this is where I think you know we get into the, the question of the of voice in photography. Like what is what is a photographer's voice? And it's not their aesthetic. It's these, these concepts that Maria talked about of, you know, of, of nostalgia and, and melancholy. You can't put that on your photograph as a filter. There isn't a nostalgia filter. There isn't you know, like a melancholy slider in Lightroom. That has to come from you as the photographer. And I was talking with a, a guy who I'm mentoring the other day just about this very topic of finding a voice and, and misinterpreting the idea in photography that you only can like photographers who align with your voice. My voice is very quiet, very, you know, down low. So that's when you look at my, my portrait photography, I have tried, I, I love Nadav Kanda's work. I dig it, right? It's so cool, the lights and the fancy things and all this, right? That I find, I, I can look at it all day long. I find it intriguing, amazing. When I've tried to photograph like that, thinking, oh, that's my voice because I like that work, it felt like it was, a, it was, it was not right. It wasn't me, it didn't flow naturally. Everything was difficult. Everything you know, was, was troublesome. Just as much as if, if I were to try and take photographs like Maria's, I would probably find it very, I love them and I would really love to wish to be able to take photographs like this, but they wouldn't be me because that's not my approach. But when you look at, you know, my, what is my approach, my street scenes of the pictures of buildings and stuff, they are devoid of people. They're quite hard. They're quite standoffish. The same maybe with my portrait photography. Then I feel more comfortable when it's in an environment that is set up to be a little bit more classical 
in terms of, of its approach, of, of simple things, not great big expressions from photography, like, oh, you know, these sort of things, right? It's more just connect with the person, give me character, give me personality. That's, I think, the difference between a aesthetic, the, you know, the swimming pool and the hats and the lights and everything of Nadov's work and, and Maria's and what have you, and then your own voice. Think about the photography that you enjoy. Picture it in your mind's eye. Okay, okay, well, who are these guys that I like? Which are the ones that I could see myself trying to photograph like? And, and think about what is it that's common in there? For me, it might be, there's actually, a, I would say, a lack of overblown emotion. Right, certainly in the terms of the portrait photography, in terms of the, the, the scenic you know, streets or the urban or the landscape stuff, I like people like, you know, Michael Kenner. Lots of that slow shutter speed stuff, you know, those awfully long exposures. Places that have a quietness to them. You might be something completely different. They might be like, yeah, yeah, bang, 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 because that's your type of person. But I, I'm looking at, at, you know, Maria's work. And, and I've never heard her speak. I don't, you know, I've never met her. I, I think, you know, it would, be, it would be fascinating to talk to her. So Maria, if, if you're watching, just reach out. I mean, maybe I should just reach out to you, right? And I, I, I'm going to go on a, on a limb here and say, I, if I met her and spoke with her, that I could see the connection. I could say, you look like the sort of person who would take these photographs. Or you feel, you give me the vibe that these are your photographs, they come from your, here, they're this in your soul. It's the same as like when I meet, uh, when I talk with Obi Romhauser, I talk to him and I see him in his photographs. In this case, quite literally, right? So his personality is shot through in these photographs. That I think is, is how, if you want to know about a key about you making your work stand out, to, to doing well in, in competitions like the House of Black Masters, then it's about what is your personality as a photographer and how do you make that happen? Who are photographers that you think, you know, sort of capture your personality? Let us know in the comments below. It's always nice to share, you know, ideas about new photographers and what have you. And if you're looking to discover, you know, photographers who you may not have heard of, then check out this video. Over here, he says, leave me out the way of the video. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.